Two, you're gonna have the opinion of, eh, pretty cool. Hold on, let me let that stupid rice burn your way. Good morning, welcome to another video with a guy and his projects. Today we are working on the six oh no. Uh, this this truck has a lot of uh, nicknames. This engine in this truck, um, the 60 is notoriously horrible engine to a lot of people. In fact, I believe it's the, like, the second most hated diesel truck in America, followed by its successor, the 6.4. So this is the 60. Um, they have a lot of problems. They're known for having problems. Not only is it a 60, but it's an early 60. It has a build date of January 04, so it's an 04, but it's the early version. And they got a lot of problems, right? Uh, you may have several different opinions. You may be like, oh my gosh, the 60, that was a bad idea. Um, or you may be thinking, the 60, oh, that's an awesome engine. As long as you don't abuse it, you don't do anything to it, just leave it stock. And then there's others that are gonna be like, Holy crap, that's an awesome engine as long as it's bulletproof, it'll last forever. Yeah, I don't really have an opinion on any of that. Um, the bulletproofing does seem like a good idea for what I know about these engines. Um, this truck has 267,000 miles on it. Uh, I bought it in early June, I believe. It is now October, early October, and I've already put over 6,000 miles on it. So. In that 6,000 miles, I have had a couple of issues that are just seemingly random. Uh, the Thickum went out right after I bought it and it's bulletproof branded, not, not just bulletproof. It's not just genu, uh, general bulletproof, it is genuine bulletproof Thickum. Um, I live in Florence, Arizona, so I just drove to Mesa, had to replace the power side. Um, so I had that go out. That's it. That, that's the only thing that's gone out in 7,000 miles. Uh, I'm so far happy with this truck. I replaced the alternator, not because it was going out, because it was a cheapy piece of crap reman in there, and I hate remans uh, when it comes to alternators. Um, I do need to replace the batteries. The previous owner just threw in some crappy ass Walmart batteries. Those will be coming. But the problem today arose when I was up north in the mountains and I couldn't start the truck in the morning because the glow plugs are not working. This is something I knew about when I bought the truck. When I read my scans, it said there's like five out of eight glow plugs not working. Um, and not only that, but the glow plug control module isn't working. So we're gonna replace the whole entire glow plug system pretty much. I've got the module, which is right here. Uh, I'm going with Ford Motorcraft because, so when it comes to sensors and stuff like that, I prefer to go OEM. So we're gonna go with Motorcraft. Uh, control module. We're going with Motorcraft ZD13 low plugs. Uh, and I also went with the Motorcraft left and right harnesses. Um, these are like the exact same harness pretty much in two very different boxes. <laughs> so we're going to all Motorcraft today and hopefully we're going to take care of this issue because I went up camping, a uh, small game hunt with my dad and my brothers. We sat in the truck up there for a few days. It was 40 degrees in the morning. I went to crank it up to come home and we just filled up the whole freaking woods with white smoke. Uh, it was quite fun. Not really. Uh, it was a bit of a stressful moment. But we pulled the codes. Uh, I got in contact with Rowdy Rack's performance down in Mesa and he helped me walk through what was going on. Uh, and that's when we realized that the glow plugs were the issue. And then after that, that's when I was looking through my notes of when I bought the truck, because I take notes when I'm talking to owners, and Wolf Lugs was on my notes. I just, whew. being here in the Arizona Valley, it's not something we worry about a whole lot. So, worrying about it today, we're gonna fix this up, and uh, yeah, come on all for the journey. So in case you guys are wondering, you're probably not. <laughs> it's 52 degrees outside this morning, 52 degrees Fahrenheit, which here in Arizona, that's amazing. So the garage's door is gonna stay open. There's a high of 82. 82 is not unbearable with the garage open. Um, <laughs> but yeah, 52 degrees, beautiful. Um, also, you probably don't need to remove this tire. Um, it doesn't matter if you're on driver's side or passenger side. You probably don't need to remove the tire. I'm gonna remove the tire so I can squeeze in there and I have room for the camera. Um, I am gonna take out this wheel well liner. 
And this is a perfect opportunity to get rid of these stupid, really ugly mud flaps that the previous owner put on. Um, when I talked to the guy, he was really proud about the fact that this was an old man truck. It looked like an old man truck, I should say. And he's right, it does. And I think when you have an old man looking truck, you probably get left alone a little bit more, I don't know. Um, either way, I don't care. I try not to break the law any more than I absolutely have to. So I'm getting rid of the mud flaps because uh, they're, not, they're not my thing. I don't know why it's taking me this long. So anyway, we're gonna get rid of this tire so it's out of the way. So you're gonna remove your tire and then this wheel well liner is attached with a myriad of eight and 10 millimeter uh, bolts and some of the plastic clips. You'll find them when you get under there. Every truck I've had, they're a misassortment if somebody has been in there before, so you'll find them. All right, so inside your wheel well, this is your shock right here. Up here, you're going to go in a little bit closer. This is all the wiring that was attached to your wheel well liner, your steering column, and then behind your steering column, you have your cylinder, um, this metal line, and then this flexible, this is electrical right here. You've got four glow plugs on each side. Uh, this little T connection is going to be your uh, connector above the glow plug. Um, so you're going to have four on each side. You got one, and then a little bit over, you got number two, and number three, and then in this big, huge bundle of messed up wiring, there is your fourth right in here. All of these are easy to get to, uh, except this one. This one took a little bit of shoving, uh, but still easily enough done. The passenger side was even easier, but uh, we, we did the driver side on video. I got the passenger a little bit. All right, so this was a little $6 tool, $12, whatever it was. Either way, it was pretty cheap. It was very handy. Some people use a piece of wire. Some people use the special tool. I went with the tool, and I highly recommend it. Uh, not necessarily that you buy it, but I enjoyed my experience with it because you literally just shove in and pull out. Um, on the passenger side, there wasn't enough room with the AC evaporator, so I ended up bending this in half, but it still worked out just fine. So on your glow plug, that's the T, you've got two slots, the tool will fit in one, not the other. Uh, put it in the one you fit and it just pulls up just like that, see? So we already pulled out the one and there's number two, easy peasy lemon squeezy, nothing to worry about. Uh, before I do the other two, seems like I can get the camera in, I'm going to go ahead and remove these glow plugs with this 10 millimeter socket. I'm using a quarter inch ratchet and I'm just going to pull these out and put those back in for the sake of the video. So. They're in there a little bit tight, but not horrible. Uh, just break it loose. Once it's loose, I grabbed a three-inch extension, put it on the on the socket, and then I was able to just unscrew these by hand. Uh, all eight of them came out just like this, easy enough. Once you get it to where it's not longer screwed in, I was able to get my fingers up in there. I've seen some people use magnets, other people use needle nose. I got my fingers, and I've got pretty meaty hands. All right, so this is the used glow plug. You can see all the oil, and you can see that it's bent. I don't know if bent is normal. Comment down below if it is. This is the new one. It is straight. That one, the little thing on the end, is bent. Uh, these are both Motorcraft part numbers. I ran the part numbers on the old one. The only difference is the old ones were made in Ireland, and the new ones were made in uh, uh, Germany. So you're going to go ahead and slide your new one back in and be ginger about it, just like a spark plug. Uh, you're going to screw it in by hand so you don't risk cross-threading because, you know, that would be very uh, sucky. And then we're going to tighten it to 168 inch-pounds, not foot-pounds, inch-pounds. You're going to do that with all four of them. Uh, once you get the fourth one done, uh, you got to go upstairs and disconnect the harness. The harness is up here by the Ficum under the, uh, well, kind of right next to the Ficum and under the degas bottle. Once you get that disconnected, you can go ahead and pull your harness out, just like so. Now the Ford part number that the Ford guy gave me off my VIN was wrong. I had to run to O'Reilly's. I got these Dormans instead, and I actually think they are nicer than the OEMs, honestly. They look pretty well built. Uh, I just grabbed some diesel motor oil and lubed the O-ring. You don't want to be like the Biden administration and going dry. All that does is piss people off, break things, and make for a worse situation than anything has to be. Always get permission and always lube up first. Uh, there, It'll click into place once you get it in there. You just kind of push it in and uh, yeah, that's that. So once you get all four snapped in, 
um, that's these right here again push down they kind of clip in uh, there's not really a clasp holding them they just kind of click into place it's a pretty solid you'll know I mean you'll know when you get there okay so now we're on the passenger side there is a lot more room uh, you can see that it's easy to get into it looks like the front two are having issues the harnesses are broken but not a big deal uh, that's what we're here to replace so this is what I said the tool kind of had to bend in half because the evaporator was kind of hanging too low and in my way but not a big deal pull out your electrodes or blow plugs push them back in uh, it's pretty easy I'm not going to show you the whole all four of them because just like the other side it's the same process all right so we're going to follow the harness up this one is right behind the alternator for the passenger side honestly it was kind of harder to get to than uh, the driver's side harness all right so this is our control module that is going to be replaced as well uh, this is easy to get to with the wheel well liner off below it. Uh, it's actually very easy access. I went from above most of it just to show you. Uh, it's this bad boy right here. You've got two harnesses hooked to it, a black harness and a green harness. Um, and it's held in by two 10 millimeter bolts, which you'll see right there. Again, this lower bolt, super easy to access from underneath if your wheel well liner is removed. These harnesses did not want to come off. I actually struggled with them for a lot longer than the video shows, but they do come off and there you go. That's your old one. Compare it to your new, make sure everything lines up and it's the same and go ahead and install it. This was actually way easy to do. So I did have, just like getting them unplugged, I had a hard time getting the harnesses snapped back in. They went till they were almost snapped, but I couldn't get them to snap in place. Uh, finally, by sheer willpower, I made it happen. All right, so you're going to put this back on the studs and get your two 10 millimeter nuts and just snug it back in place. There's nothing scientific about it. I don't have a torque spec. Just go till they're snug. You don't need to go tight. And you can see my hand right there. I went from underneath because I was like, well, shoot, you guys get the point. All right, so again, 10 millimeters. Uh, this is about a, I think it's a 12 inch extension. You don't need that long. It just what I grabbed and it worked out just fine. So here we are and voila, check it out. Not too bad guys, easy enough. All right, so we got all eight glow plugs replaced. Got the vacuum canister back in place. Went ahead and replaced our coolant filter while we're at it, because why not? Um, so we replaced, overview, overview, we replaced all eight glow plugs. We replaced the uh, glow plug control module, which is that shiny thing right there now because it's brand new. And we replaced both glow plug harnesses, which is right there and right there. So theoretically, we should be good to go. All right guys, we got the glow plugs replaced. So we did the glow plugs, we did the harnesses, and we did the control module, did all that, and uh, well, I cleared the codes, we had several codes, uh, I cleared them, and as of yet, they haven't come back. I just did a 30 mile trip, uh, pulled over, stopped a couple times, started back up. Uh, I think I've gone through an entire drive cycle, and I still don't have any more new codes for glow plugs. So, fingers crossed, that took care of the issue. Uh, I don't know what brand was in there before as far as glow plugs. I don't know what brand the harness was. But the harness was broken in several spots, especially on the passenger side. Uh, the old harness, we got Thormans in there right now. They actually seem really well built. <coughs> um, they actually seem really well built. And uh, yeah, hopefully they do me good. I don't want to be stranded up north in the cold. Uh, <laughs> that would suck. If you guys like what you saw, make sure you leave me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. That helps me out a lot. Uh, and leave a comment down below. Uh, let me know if you've ever been stranded for glow plugs. Let me know if you've changed yours, how it went. Uh, if there's an easier way to do it. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next time.